I believe you will be able to tell from his interviews that uh, Aaron Spitz, Dr. Aaron Spitz, you know, is uh, very uh, trying his best in the practical ways to serve his patients better. Well, not just his own patient, but the other patients as well. Uh, in medicine, make it simple and speaking, it, speaking about medicine in a plain word is way difficult than many things. So it takes a lot of time to find the proper comparison and to make the complex, you know, those concepts into the simple, uh, singular, I would say, uh, uh, concept. So it takes a lot of, lot of time and outside of your practice. But uh, Dr. Spitz is doing it regularly and shows up on TV to tell the people about that in the plain words at the same time. He even wrote a book. Um, those activities are not just for his own patients, not just for his own fame. He's trying to help the other patients as well. At the same time, by doing so, he's, you know, make the world healthier and a better place. I deeply admire his enthusiasm toward uh, do the better good. So, um, hopefully, <laughs> I could do the same thing. Well, erectile dysfunction is a very uh, intimate and, and very um, uh, central problem for men. Uh, and it really can strike the man to his core because it affects not just the ability to have sexual intercourse, but the ability to establish an intimate relationship. It also affects his own self-confidence, not just his sexual self-confidence, but his self-confidence even as uh, a member of the community, um, a person in his workplace, uh, a, a father, a husband. Uh, it spills over into all aspects of his identity, or it can. The, the treatment of erectile dysfunction really had been neglected for most of human history until the discovery of sildenafil. And prior to the ability to give a man a pill, um, the treatments that were, that were uh, existing were unpleasant or scary, uh, you know, needle injections, uh, vacuum devices, things like this. And most doctors really didn't even want to bring up the subject. Then once Viagra came out, men uh, you know, came, came out of the woodwork and doctors were more than happy to bring it up. And Viagra helped uh, a tremendous number of men, but it didn't help everybody. And about 35% of men do not respond to pills, whether it's Viagra or Cialis or Sildenafil, uh, uh, Stendra, or, you, know, you name it. And so what's even worse sometimes than having erectile dysfunction and not treating it is having erectile dysfunction treating it and it doesn't work. Then what? Now you can really feel hopeless. But see, that's where penile prosthesis comes in because when a man is unable to be treated, is unable to be cured by medications, he can be cured by penile prosthesis. So penile prosthesis is the, the last and, and most effective treatment for these hard to treat patients and it gives them a second chance when everything else has failed. It can be a complex surgery and it's a delicate operation and there's a lot at stake. And so for many urologists it's intimidating but for the urologists who are courageous enough to perform this operation, it can have such an important impact on this patient's life. This patient who ultimately thought there may have been no cure, uh, it, it gives them a renewed life. I think that as surgeons, we have uh, a desire to perfect our craft. And perfection is never attained. Uh, perfection is, a, is an ideal. Um, and so we're always pursuing a refinement. And as much as I know and as much as I do, uh, I'm always able to learn from others and their experience. Um, no two patients are the same, and the more experience that my colleagues collect uh, and then report back on, uh, the better prepared I am for that next patient who presents with an unusual presentation that I might not have seen before. Or the more confident I am 
that I am on the right track providing the best possible care for my patients. So in, in our desire to strive to be as, as good as we can and to, and to provide our patients with the best care possible, um, we are very excited to be able to come and continue to share our information with others, but also pick up pearls uh, from those sharing with us. And so uh, I look at these kinds of conferences as really uh, an exciting part of my career. This is a part of my career that's dynamic where I'm learning new things and I'm growing. I think that we are in an evolutionary phase with our um, perception about the treatment of ED. I think that the advent of Viagra really uh, took away a lot of the shame, but it didn't completely eliminate the shame because uh, the treatment for ED uh, is very, very recent in the uh, timeline of human history. And I think that sex and issues about sex and difficulty with sex uh, have been stigmatized um, for uh, generations. And so to now have this new enlightenment, this new understanding uh, about ED as a medical condition, as a physiological condition that is not the fault of the man per se, is, is still very young in human understanding. And so even though we physicians don't think it's stigmatized, I think that there are a large number of men who feel very stigmatized and who they themselves would not feel comfortable revealing this problem to anyone else. And it takes still a lot of encouragement and support and understanding to bring these men to the doctor's office, even now. So even though doctors may not feel stigmatized, I think patients definitely still do. I think the greatest reward is actually that one-on-one -on -one conversation with the patient after he's completely recovered from surgery and is enjoying a normal, healthy sex life. Uh, when you ask him how it's going, and he looks at you and he says, it's great, it's fantastic. And even better yet, if his wife is in the room or his partner's in the room, <laughs> you just know that because of what you did and the time and effort you put into becoming an expert so that you could do this for this person, you've given them an aspect of the human experience that is so valuable and so important that, that they would have been denied of any other way. Uh, it's really gratifying to know that you had that impact on somebody else's life, on, on two people's lives. My goal when I appear on the television programs is to be able to give good, reliable information that's scientifically sound in a way that's easy to understand and easy to, uh, to digest. And so what I do is I try to condense a lot of complex scientific ideas into very simple concepts with some humor. And I find that humor is often the best medicine and the best way for the viewing audience to understand the medicine that we're talking about. And so when I appear on these shows, uh, I actually do a lot of preparation ahead of time to consider what is the topics we're going to be discussing, what's important for the viewing audience to know for their own health, and also for their own safety. And then I try to bring that out uh, in language that is fun, but factual. Well, after several years of appearing on television, and being able to speak about a number of urological conditions, but very often about conditions of the penis, whether it's erectile dysfunction or <clears throat> implant surgery, uh, uh, trauma, what have you, uh, it occurred to me that it would be really useful to have a publication with information that was comprehensive about the penis that covered the men and women's concerns uh, ranging from, you know, is my penis normal size, <laughs> to um, why do I have trouble getting an erection, to is this a sexually transmitted disease, uh, circumcision, transgender surgery, all, all the various aspects uh, of men's health involving their genitals. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I could write a book in language that would be easy to understand, entertaining, touch of humor, and it would be the kind of information that if I had all the time in the world, I would want to tell my patient. But the practicalities of practice are, we have a limited amount of time that we can spend with our patients. And so this book 
has the kind of information that when I see a patient who has a given condition involving their penis, if they take a look at that chapter or that section of the book, it's going to tell them everything I wish that I had time to tell them with illustrations and give them a really deep, solid understanding of their own condition. Or give them a, see, a deep, solid understanding of why, in fact, they are normal and they don't need to be anxious or they don't need to feel stigmatized. Because a lot of, a lot of uh, misinformation is out there online or you know, just, just passed down and many men feel woefully inadequate about their genitals which are totally normal or men experience um, occasional irregularities in their sexual function or, 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 or notice something uh, unusual on their skin temporarily and get very scared. You get very scared that they have uh, a significant disease or maybe cancer or something's wrong with them neurologically and it's just normal variation. So a lot of that is addressed in the book as well. Um, but uh, I feel that this book is really a, uh, a useful uh, tool to educate the public. Um, useful not only just for casual reading, but even useful as a tool for physicians to, uh, to provide for their patients.